Jonathan. How you doing? Doing great. How are you doing today? Doing great. Uh, glad for your uh, direct message suggestions. And I am pursuing them vigorously. Okay, great. So we're here August 22nd in a retrospective for the Offers and Needs Marketplace that we attempted um, last week. And so we had some good things happen and some things we wanted to improve. So we wanted to have a specific workshop just to focus on how we want to approach the process going forward. All right. So Benson or whoever, where would you like to begin? I just need another minute. I'm just grabbing the Zoom chat and I'm putting it through the um, Bentley's Zoom chat easy reader just so we have it in like a spreadsheet. And then we can go through, I can um, lead us through the feedback. Um, but if someone wants to do something else to start off, there's a few other topics. We can probably just wait for that. Yeah, that's probably a good place to start. So, so you can concentrate. We can hit pause on the recording too until we're ready, I suppose, if you want to. I would just save it. Okay. Okay, so I think this is where we started the retro at 528. So what questions, what did you find transformative? Did we ask the right questions and what went well? So at this point, I believe we decided we would do a quick waterfall in the chat and not really go into those in detail. Um, and this is kind of the start of the feedback. So Judy said, good questions, rich input, but highly varied in content and style. So we'll need some sorting. Um, so is that in reference to the actual needs and offers themselves? You just think that there needs to be um, ways of filtering, filtering them or sorting them. So, so would a way to say that being like varying content or style? So, you, so we ask a, a prompt, and then lots of people receive that in different ways and respond in different ways. So, I guess the issue is there that the varying content and and style of responses might require some post processing. And also, it's um, the the structure is different from um, offer to offer, right? So you can't just not everybody got the same thing in the same place and in, in their offer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I did. I did think that um, the the prompt of what it was we were doing and for what purpose, um, what was not quite clear. And, and so, you know, I think the, the answers had a lot of room for variance and um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still puzzling over honestly, you know, what, how one offers what to whom and asks what of whom um, just seemed, you know, sort of intimidatingly broad in a way. Yeah, we, that, that was a core reflection that I think Pete and had too, Pete and I had too. It's almost like we jumped into kind of, to like creating off, 
just sharing offers and needs without building up like the substrata almost, I think what you're saying of like the context, why this is important, how it best unrolls. So it's, it's almost like we start playing a game without really dialing into the rules a little bit, something like that. Okay, so we kind of captured that. Vincent, do you want to? Um... I'll just respond to that briefly and say this went pretty similarly to some of the other needs and offers workshops I've either been in or facilitated. And that um, high variation of the types of needs and offers and shared is pretty typical. Um, and I expected it. So um, it is something that um we can mold to fit the needs of whatever specific group that we're running it in for the next time um and so yeah i think it's it's a i think it was a good experiment to figure out okay what um how should it what direction should it be pulled towards so yeah curious if you guys have any just thoughts briefly on like um if we were to run it again how how would you frame it differently Let's go, um, I'm gonna make a heading here, Vincent called process improvement and put that question down. If we ran it again, how might we contextualize and frame it differently? Okay, so would it be okay, Vincent, if we captured that as a question and then kept going through the feedback? Cause I think I'll, at least I'll be able to better respond to that once we, once we maybe have a fuller view of the feedback. Sure. Yeah, that works. Okay. Uh, Jonathan. Um, it's currently, it seems like uh, nobody's using the results. And so I would encourage us to figure out a way to make it more dominant or useful or, well, attractive. So people go, oh gosh, you know, I have this need, I'm going to post it. Or, oh gosh, I want to see what needs are out there. Um, that's where I want, that's that's where my attention is going. So maybe we add a section for next steps and that would include sending out the, um, the opportunities that were shared. And we talked about also sending out potentially um, in like a newsletter format. Yeah like um, an email classified ads <laughs> right okay yeah so I, so I agree there's like this issue of you run the workshop and getting people to adopt it as an ongoing thing is um, completely different issue Okay, go to the next chat. Um, I, so Jonathan said, great questions, well presented. I said, I think we asked the right questions, but needed more time to properly come to agreement or shared understanding on them. So um, yeah, the workshop definitely, for me, I, I felt a little rushed trying to get it into the time um especially since it was the first time that a lot of people have um done the needs and offers workshop it seemed to me so typically like two hours is a what they suggest um and yeah i think i think just having more time to kind of um respond to questions and to clarify the framing could have helped so that was just, yeah, one of my main pieces of feedback. If we were to do it again, to just make sure we have the proper time allotment. 
And if we want to do a retro afterwards, it would have to be a little more than two hours. It felt um Okay, got it. So we captured that. Uh, but let's keep going through the responses. And I kind of felt, I guess, just a quick reflection is the way I was kind of processing it. it sounds like the way maybe Michael had received it. It was almost like even if we had another three, four minutes per prompt or five minutes per prompt, I think it still might have been difficult. Um, I don't know exactly why that is yet, but. Um, so, so I guess maybe part, maybe part of it is having more time to sync up and understand the question. Maybe part of it is the pre-existing context. And then I think maybe part of it is just there's, it's, it's like, um, so I'm wondering about the asynchronous elements of, I guess, of this almost like the asynchronous elements of how markets form versus trying to do form a market in a session um, versus like carefully crafting your Craigslist post and going like, okay, I have this surfboard and someone can have it if they'll give me a hundred dollars and you know, I take some pictures and then it's like, boom. And that's all happening asynchronously where if it's like, okay, what do you have in your house that you'd sell for how much? You might be able to like pull together a couple of things, but not sure if there's as much depth or meaning there as, as might come forth in other ways. Yeah, I, I think that that sums up a lot of the um, sort of understanding of what the market is before you try to play in it. It's like, you know, this was um, like it was at once uh, whatever it was, seven or eight people in like a family meeting, like talking about their personal um needs and offers and then thinking about it in terms of a broader marketplace among uh you know participants in our our larger group and then thinking about it in a public context and it was just very it's like is this about the skills that i have to offer in my linkedin profile that somebody would pay me for or yeah, is it yeah. you know I'll cook a meal for you or you can stay with me, which I wouldn't say to just anybody who can see LinkedIn profile, but I would say to everybody in that meeting and most of the people, it, it was just, it was too amorphous, yeah. I, I think, to really know. And, and, and it's, not, it's not really about the process, it's just about the frame of the process. And like when I was, I remember I was asking like, okay, so this is when you say public, do you mean public to the world or public to everybody on Catalyst, which are very different publics? You know, right. I mean, I, I might put some stuff on Catalyst that I wouldn't put on, you know, a larger platform. And so, yeah, it, that that kind of stuff I think is is useful framing. Um, just like the Craigslist example that that you were using, um, Jordan. Like, okay you know how this game is played and who's going to see this and yeah like for you might not post on craigslist to new york that there's free meals and a room to stay in <laughs> yeah so so and then catalyst like maybe it's everybody on catalyst but i don't know how many people are on catalyst vincent but let's say it's sub a thousand pretty carefully vetted people that are already playing in like the network of networks you know so it's it's already fairly curated by that makes sense michael yeah yeah i think next time i definitely would um frame it um frame the concentric circles of sharing i would just ask so michael like i'm glad that you asked the question during the meeting um did was my answer clear enough um, or do you still have other questions? Um, like, did that, like, if you didn't ask that question, it might not have been clear to other people. So I'm curious if my answer was was clear enough and like um, gave you the answer you were looking for. Or for next well, it was time. Interesting. It was an interesting, I remember the answer just in that you, I, I felt like it was sort of, 
it was sort of fuzzing out the border of catalyst just because you said, you know, and I, I get it, you said anybody who has this URL will be able to see it, which sort of made it the case that, okay, somebody could take this URL and distribute it and people who weren't on Catalyst would see it, which made that public bigger. Um, and it was, it, it, it you know, it's, it's still a, a bit of a conceptual challenge, um, you know, just how, yeah, what kind of, what kind of needs one exposes and what kind of services one offers, um, you know, it, it still had that sort of how public is this, how comfortable am I, you right. know, and what, what's called for and, you know, how generous can I be, how, how vulnerable can I be, those things, you know. I, I felt just to, I'm less familiar, familiar with, with all those things, but I, I felt like it was still a little unclear um, and, and events. And I think your answer was relatively simple. I think maybe from a tech standpoint, it's simple, but I think from a user experience, like it's a little hard to conceptualize those things, you know, because yeah. it's like, because I think, okay, I'm going to click public on Catalyst, like Michael's saying is different than like, I'm posting this on Craigslist, even though they're both public. So I, so I think we can maybe differentiate it out just a little bit more. Okay, let's go to Pete. Uh, thanks, and switch headsets. I forgot to charge my other ones. Uh, these might not noise cancel as well. So apologize if there's noise in the background. There isn't right now. Um, uh, I want to make an observation of a, a, a non-judgmental observation. Um, uh, that uh, we didn't, I, I feel like we didn't have a, uh, essentially a project plan, what, it, what I call the everything is a project plan uh, kind of plan for the needs and offers uh, session. Um, so now we're kind of in a weird place where we're trying to judge the success or, or not of the, the session without any criteria that we set up beforehand, right? So, um, so mm -hmm. I think most of you probably know my my everything is a project thing. But um, so a couple things. One of them is uh, it would be super super cool if we all collectively were able to set up. You know, here's the the goals and the approach for this thing, um, and then we run the thing, and then we retro it. Um, uh, partly, especially for this crew, partly just to help other people learn how to do it. Um, uh, so if I, I feel like, so my, so my quick thought about it is, I feel like if what we wanted to do was introduce needs and offers marketplaces to people and run through a little practice and break the ice, especially, um, to like, you know, okay, I'm going to post my first one and my first two and, you know, I'm, I'm going to survive and if it's not perfect, it's going to be okay. Um, yeah. I think we did that pretty well. Um, I, I wish that we had had more time um, and we didn't, which is fine. Um, I wish we had set up what a needs and offers marketplace is more. I, I think we could have had a whole session just on that to kind of um, hopefully with maybe a few more people, I guess, but you know, what is a need? What is an offer? Why do we even want a marketplace? You know, what, uh, you know, what are we going to do with this thing once we build it? That kind of stuff. All that stuff we, we kind of like skipped past. And that was the, yeah. the, the main, you know, wish that I had for this, this session. But overall, I think it was really successful. I felt like, I was like, okay, I got dragged through making an offer, you know, that I wasn't expecting to at the beginning. And, you know, I, I survived. It was it was great and wonderful. Um, we got to maybe another goal for it was to stress test the, the infrastructure. And uh, like you said during the session, Jordan, this is great. Good job, Vincent. We you know we we ground through it and we ground until it broke. And you know that's beautiful and wonderful. That's not a bad thing. Um, uh, if we had a different goal, 
Um, a different goal might have been to populate the needs and offers database um, with, you know, uh, three yeah. or four or 10 different offers of needs from each person. I think it was mostly a failure, right? Because we didn't get through very much. Um, we didn't really get to do uh, uh, needs very well, you know, yada, yada. Maybe we didn't even have enough people in the room. Um, so I think I think if we judge it against that criteria, which is another, we need to get to that criteria at some point in our uh, in our maturity, hopefully soon. Um, I think I think we kind of failed, um, but I think that's the wrong criteria. So, yeah. so a question maybe for this team on this meeting is, maybe we can. I don't I don't think we should go through developing a whole project plan right now, but maybe we can start to like sketch that out. You know, what are we trying to accomplish? What's our time frame? Um, how important it is is it to just get people started? How important is it to get it populated? How important is it to get it used? Um, and you know, how do we set those set, set each of those needs up with an approach that we think is going to be successful? So that might be something we could kind of do today. And and I think we should do more of that before we do kind of more mind, uh, blind execution into trying to get something done without understanding what it is that we're trying to get done. So Pete, as you're saying that alarm bells are going off for like full planning this week, right? Because uh, we, we did a little intro a few weeks back that some people were there or not, and there will be people who weren't there. Um, so this, is, this will help inform that. Jonathan. Um, Jordan, is it okay if I make reference to some of what we discussed in our direct message channel? Um, you are always welcome to discuss anything. Thanks. So after posting my needs, Jordan said, hey, you know, if, if you wanted, I, I can give you what I think are the next steps to follow if for you to be proactive about getting your needs met. And after that, I reached out to Bill and he uh, walked me through what he thought was a good project proposal template, um, which opened my eyes a lot. Um, and then I posted that into the wiki. And then what the heck? did some project proposals um and um to me that was a partial answer to gee what do we do next um so i offer that one of the things just to build on that so one of the things that um jonathan are you okay if i candidly discuss some of the things that were in our direct yes. messages yes um so one of the, the things that I think Mike, Michael brought up is in there, we, ha we had everything from, um, you know, Jonathan making a direct request for, you know, a job or a, you know, specific funding or ask um, all the way up to more community-based, um, you know, things. So I, one of the things I was reflecting with on Jonathan was, um, okay, so let's, let's say Jonathan has a need for, paid work programming related to these areas of expertise and blah, 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 and, and he would like a job. I think um, I, I was pondering how we could recontextualize those things in a way that might get more support. So it's one thing if um, Jonathan says, okay, I have a need for paid coding work on Apple products, stuff, right? It's another thing if, if Jonathan signals to the group, like, I think there's some of us who have who would like paid coding work for things that the community finds meaningful on these platforms that we think we might want to use. And it would be great if we could set up some kind of a 
system that would help me and others find that, whatever. So I was reflecting with Jonathan that a lot of times when these individual needs come up, if you can abstract them out a step and then create a solution that benefits you and 10 of your friends that are in the same boat, they might get a lot more likely to act upon. Because I was, I was just imagining kind of Jonathan sitting there 30 days later going, well, nobody gave me a job. No, but none of the seven people gave me a job coding, you know, it didn't work. It's like, no, okay, how do, how do we take those needs, abstract them into something the group might be able to help with or, and so, so I was trying to sort out some of those different levels as well. And, and that was very useful. And I changed how I framed my need in my own mind. Um, and Bill's suggestions regarding a template um, gave me a process of articulating the benefit to the all. Yeah. How yeah. to go about investigating what my need fits into that bigger need. And yep. that's how I frame my proposals. And I, I dropped the one for needing work. Yeah. And then, and then Jonathan, just this is a 20 second comment, and then we should get back to the retro. But you can then expect those to like, if you do a project proposal and it's not acted on immediately by the group. Just because you do a proposal doesn't mean it's the top priority this week for everybody in the group, right? So you can expect, like, you see a need, it turns into maybe something that can solve problems for multiple members of the community, right? Then you need to expect that to get kind of stacked and queued up against all the things we could spend time on this week. Right. And then we need to go through kind of a discernment process to go, okay, in light of all these needs, what are the ones that are shared by the most people that we should act on, right, in order of importance? And then you could expect that over a matter of quarters, you know, things will get subsequently addressed and developed. So I think the maturity of that whole process. And so, Pete, I think that goes back to this everything is a project approach. It's like need, uh, maybe expressed as a user story, right? Like if we were to use the little PM backbone that you and I spent a couple hours on, like a, a user, a community member has this problem and would like this outcome and would blah, blah. And then that could start to inform a, everything as a project plan that gets queued up and maybe eventually executed on. So that's an interesting, so like needs expressed as stories, you know, reconciled and prioritized that the group can act on. In addition to okay so let's let's go should we roll back to the next feedback in the chat sure i could screen share again let's see Okay, I think we were. Does anyone remember the last question we were at? I don't know why I can't find it. Let's see. We did Judy and then just a few more, right? Yeah, it just seems like there's something missing here. Okay, so yeah, I think this is where we are. Um, so Jordan, do you think we should have a working group dedicated to needs and offers? You said, I'd like to see a working group tweak them and uh, a little and merge into the onboarding process. Well what I meant by that was this gets back to like, um, if there's more of a steady state marketplace that's being enriched over time 
And if we imagine that we're going from seven us of us to thousands of us getting onboarded, I was suggesting that if we get really good at maybe the questions and the asynchronous side of this, then as people step into the community, there'd be a way to like build up through the onboarding process. Maybe this relates to what Pete was talking about. Michael was talking about these layers of context and framework that right. eventually result in them being able to feed into the need and, and offers marketplace. But that might be after, so, so just to quickly tie, quickly tie this out to like the onboarding conversation, it might be that like after, after four, after four or five minute videos that kind of create the context in your onboarding process, right? You have the option if you want to play in the needs and, and offers marketplace to watch and reflect on two or three videos that kind of outline what those things are and why and how they function and whatever. And then, and then you're invited to, you know, post into the needs and offers marketplace. And so you've built up like, you know, it's, it's taken you a, a little investment of time to get onboarded, a little orientation to what that is. And then, you go on and there there's um there, that kind of kind of curriculum based learning is in the uh can be built into the open impact platform for instance so we could set up you know a series of little modules and when you get to the third one then you get an assignment or whatever so we might be able to facilitate some of that but so anyway that was all just to say that seemed approximately right i'm not sure if and and i think we should tie the process somehow asynchronously into how people get onboarded and met or, they, or that's a hypothesis. Um, Jordan, it, it, it provokes a question to me of <clears throat> that I think maybe puts a finer point on some stuff that we were already talking about. The needs, um, the offers and needs marketplace being a uh, an integral part. I mean, I'm thinking about the thousands of us and yeah. imagining it as, you know, it's not quite a workplace, but it's like we're we're endeavoring to do something together. And is our offers and needs marketplace trying to be both the office bulletin board where we're talking about, you know. I've got a, you know, I've got a surfboard to sell. I've got, you know, you know, our, our, we're having a, a street party, you know, all, all the different things that apply to people in the workplace and are open to others, but not really having to do with the work versus we are putting our offers and needs out here for the projects that are in service of our higher goal. And let's, let's not, Let's not sell surfboards here. And, and maybe it's both, but I mean, I think that's part of the, the lack of clarity that, that I felt. I think that's a very correct lack of clarity and that's good differentiation arising from that. So to repeat that back, there's these different levels. There's, there's a community of people trying to do things together and there's a natural desire to say, hey, I've got a place to stay, or does anybody want to surfboard, or, you know, I'm hosting a uh, Native American flute class on blah, 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 right? So those are the things you'd find, like, on a on a lunchroom bulletin board, or on a Starbucks bulletin board. It's like those kind of things. Then there's, then there's offers, I think, among the, that are, like, work-related offers among the community of projects moving in service the goal, like, I'm, uh, Vincent made an offer to mentor in a certain type of tooling, right? If somebody's moving in service to the goal, let's say. So that's a great offer that's kind of open. Then we had somebody like Judy go, okay, I, I'm I'm willing to help in these kind of areas, but I, I don't, I can't get flooded out with requests from like small projects to work on project proposals because I should probably be working on the higher levels of abstraction. So I'm willing to work on project plans, but at, at kind of the meta project level, let's say. And so that's different than let's say Vincent's offer on, on kind of, so, so I think those are like at least three levels of differentiated exchange that are important and that we didn't really tee up. 
and even the example of Vincent's offer, which, you know, sounded, oh, like I, I can think how like learning more about no code, you know, would, would help me in doing some project that isn't meta project related. So I'm interested in that. Um, but, you know, for, for the things that are being offered for there to be an understood parenthetical that's like Judy's of like, I'm not offering this to everybody for anything. I'm offering this as part of our collective mission. Um, you know, and, and if, yeah. if my skills can benefit your piece of our collective mission, then talk to me. And Vincent, as I'm trying to listen to this from your perspective, I think there's that like to, to whom is the offer made type thing that it's an opportunity to, to differentiate that. But I think this goes back to all of us being new and not really understanding that. And I, and I think it, it takes some, like that, it wasn't obvious to me. And I think until you experience and go through with it, you haven't dealt with those different abstractions, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, part of it is, you know, this is kind of one of the first times running this where we're trying to kill two birds. Well, maybe we're trying to feed two birds with one scone. So, right, using the event itself to also um, feed the <laughs> community more broadly with like the offers and needs that were at the event for people who missed it. So there is definitely more clarification there needed. Um, this, is, this process is done within large companies. So like I was touching on briefly in Ford, um, my good friend Dominic was telling me about the process that they do at the like executive level for um, across departments, figuring out what are the different needs and how they can be met. There's two things that are done that we didn't really do. So one is there's some shared understanding by everyone of like, what are the, the goals of like, right? We all know what the goals of the company are. And so when somebody shares a need, then the second level is having the discernment. So the people who are in those meetings have the discernment to say, you, that's not the need, you, you, that's not the right need, or like you actually need this. And so being able to um, have the end goal. And then when people say, this is what I need, have a good enough understanding of being able to say, actually yeah. what you really need might be this, you're asking for the wrong thing. And um, yeah, yeah so that's, that's something that as there's more understanding of the goal for Meta Project and that, and it's more clear what the different working groups are and what is actually needed by the organization as a whole, then you can also have people that are taking these needs and offers and aligning them and, you know, being a little bit more critical about whether or not it's the right thing. Yeah. We, just to, just to validate that, like in the CEO advisory groups I've been been a part of, that's a really key thing. Is someone will present an issue, and and a lot 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 of the time, if you have twenty sharp people in the room, the issue will end up being clarified in a pretty different way. Yeah, um, and and I guess that's a little bit of maybe what Jonathan and I modeled. It's like you can go from a presenting symptom to deeper root causes and come to a much more comprehensive solution. So that, that seems like an important point. And, and Vincent, then I think like, I think this plays to what you were saying too, Michael, like really, if we strongly contextualize within our overarching shared goals, why we're doing this, right? Then it forces every kind of need and offer to be heard in the context of what we're trying to accomplish together. And then if there's that, that ability to kind of shape so one, one interesting thought, so Vincent, you were saying that happens at the team level, basically, or the department level, let's say, instead of at the in individual level. So one of the things- Across departments, typically. I mean, it, it could also happen within a team as well. Yeah, yeah, so it, it's practical, but I think that the example you gave was where internal teams are kind of discussing what their needs are, then they're presenting those out across teams, right? Right. So, so at that level of analysis, you're getting a different thing, right? You're getting someone who's expressed the need to a team, then the teams process that enough that they're then pre presenting it out across teams for 
so so that's another just interesting thing is I guess it relates to we were going back to maybe we don't make and keep commitments at the individual level. We try to get individuals into small groups or teams and that and that's the level that we operate at a little bit more. Um, so I wonder if some of that would help sort it out, like trying to figure out, I don't know. Yes, and. Okay, we got, we've got uh, maybe 12 minutes here, I guess. Okay, so Jonathan said transformer to see our needs and offers for reels. Um, Bill said, I thought the breakout conversations worked well. I thought the last section expressing was very practical and points to some possibly valuable conversations to take place soon. Um, the next question was, was there anything you found transformative and could have been done better if we run this again? Judy said, smaller discrete aspects for easier response and collation. Pete said, I think we skipped over grounding in some sort of history of offers and needs throughout human history and how, why we might want an offers and needs market for our community. Um, I mentioned allowing people to submit things beforehand and to be able to spend more time in person discussing and clarifying. So if you have the reflection time of writing down your offer, then you can use that time to, for people to be like, is that actually the right need or the right offer? Um, Jonathan said the kind of need slash offers needs tweaking. Um, most people chose service. So yeah, that was specifically in the fields better communication about onboarding to the event page if used again. It seems to me that expressing needs first provokes a very different and empathetic response. Maybe needs should go first. Um, I'll stop there. There's a two more, but does anyone want to, I saw some things in the chat. Um, I could keep sharing this since I went through a few of them. Um, does anyone want to comment on any, any of the things that were just mentioned. I think it, it's an interesting idea to um, set up a workflow in which maybe there's some asynchronous videos that lead or something that lead to well expressed offers and needs, and then using the time together to. Um, so I think that's what you were saying, Vincent, to facilitate some kind of a process that creates understanding and expression in advance, and then uses the time together to kind of like vet and synergize and clarify. Um, that feels like that could be that could be really useful in um, in companies. A lot of times, if a offer or needs going to be presented to like process improvement or to it requires some work ahead of time, you know, to kind of fill out the form properly, contextualize the issue and make sure. So it's really, really efficient uptake for the group instead of people kind of processing live in group settings. So that's an interesting idea. I also wonder, uh, as I look at the, um, the notion of thinking about things beforehand and submitting things beforehand, uh, and I think back a little bit to one early tapestry grid where, you know, we were sort of saying, well, these are things, it was, it was very, very broadly defined in the sense that, okay, here are some things that I'm good at. Um, and that that's the piece of, of the tapestry form I remember, but, but also thinking about like, how one experiences 
um, a, a job hunt, for instance, and looking at a, a site where, or you know, looking on LinkedIn and seeing, okay, this is who somebody is and what they offer. That doesn't specifically mean that that what they describe is exactly the only thing that they could do. And if you can, if you can more generally both describe your skills and your needs, it may be that you're willing to volunteer some and you're willing to be paid, do some stuff for money and you're willing to do some stuff for barter. And it, you know, if somebody wants to work with you on X and wants to do it for barter and they've got something you want, that's cool but it doesn't mean you're only willing to work on X for barter. And, and if you do that thing for barter, then you wouldn't, you know, it's, it, they're all, yeah. Yeah. they all get mixed up um, at times. I'm, I'm not presenting an answer right there, but I do think that the doing something in advance where you kind of generally flesh out what you've got to offer and what you need, it, it, it is, might be a little helpful compared to like okay here is a block of a thing that i am willing to do and a response to it this is really interesting um doing something in advance to kind of flesh out you know kind of who you are and what you're passionate about and what you'd like to be doing, you know, almost in what percentages <laughs> and what you need. Um, that's really interesting, Michael. The, the thing that that's making me think of is that people have no idea what they want or need, <laughs> like really. And, and so I think there's, uh, like if you're forming a team, you're like, okay, Michael, what's your best role on the team? It's like, well, I don't know. <laughs> and it depends on everybody else in the room and what we all like doing right. and whatever. And so it's almost like, I, I guess what, what I think you're presenting is that if there's a process that kind of gets to know each person, we can kind of help each other find out how we fit and where and how that meets the total set of volunteering and paid hours that come together to create. Um, and, and maybe that's super unfair to expect that someone would be able to articulate that for themselves, right? So I'm almost thinking, uh, uh, Jonathan, you, you've uh, advocated for, you know, when someone's coming in kind of this, uh, I don't know what it's called, but a mentor guardian role that kind of, a greeter. You know, I, a, a greeter. To mentor me guardian. Yep. Yeah. Then a mentor or guardian who kind of yep, yep, yep. walks you through a process of getting to know you, introducing you to different circles you might play in, like finding out what you want. Someone, someone might want full-time paid work and someone might want 40 hours of paid work and would love to spend 15 hours on coding a game they're passionate about just, you know, as part of a team and someone else may just want to volunteer for an hour a week, you know? So I think the way to help figure out who people are, what they want to do and plug them in is, is really critical. The, the other type of um, persona that that makes me think of is like, I bet between us, I, at least I know, I have a decent network of people who would like for sure take a 15 or 30 minute action if I asked them to, but will will not engage to try to figure out what to do. Um, so that's like a whole other persona, right? Where there's almost like a push, like a, I was in a board meeting the other day for a different organization. And one of the board members said, man, I just wish we always had a constant stream of just knowing like what's needed next for the organization to advance and, and like just constantly getting fed information so that we in our network know what's needed to get through the next roadmaps. So that's an interesting side of this too. But maybe there's something about defining the different types of personas even that play. It has been suggested that we should have a questionnaire that is 
a resource that the people you just talked about could um, aid in the process of onboarding new people and discovering what their skills and passions are. That questionnaire kind of got bogged down and then died. I would love to see it revived. It could revive under your leadership, Jonathan. Accepted. Okay, so we've just got a minute here. I think I think this was really useful because I so I think we got less of like a super tangible next step than we could have, and probably a much deeper understanding of the process. Um, so I feel like this is this is leading us to I feel like our experiment to orient like so I think if we take Pete's suggestion that we look at that as an experiment to kind of like practice and run a game and feel what it was like that feels like it led us to have a much more differentiated understanding of all this um, that could probably then lead us into a next step being kind of like a process for project type plan of how we advance this. So I, that would be kind of my suggestion on where where we wanna go next is that maybe we, maybe I communicate out to the group like, okay, that was an amazing experiment and here's some of the things we learned. And based on that, what we're gonna do is um, come up with a project plan for how we're gonna contextualize and set up these markets a little better and advance that over the coming weeks, something like that. Um, how, how does that hypothesis sound? And is there any other key actions we should take as we come to the end of this? Yeah, Vincent. Uh, yes, that sounds good. And I'd like to set up a one hour meeting that um, to go basically a co-working meeting um, this is something that I would do, um, I could do on my own, but instead I'd rather just say, hey, I'll be working on this at this time. And if anyone wants to join, um, basically to go through. Hi, Judy. Hi, I'm sorry I came in late. I had another meeting run over. No problem. I'm not sure I can help much at this point, but. <laughs> you'll you'll catch the important. last, uh, yeah, we're, we're one minute over. So Vincent, just making closing comment here and then. We've got it recorded. I could hang on for a few more minutes with you, Judy. Um, so maybe I'll wrap up and then pass it to you in case you had any reflections um, that you want to share with the group live. Okay. I was just saying, I was just saying I'd like to spend about an hour to go through the um, needs and offers that weren't captured and um, synthesize and curate those. Um, I've started already, and then basically figure out the right ways to export that information so it can be sent out in a newsletter and um, shared with the broader community. So basically those seem like the next action steps. And so if anyone here would like to be invited to that meeting, Jonathan, okay, cool. Um, let me know, I could send it out. Um, I'll post in Mattermost as well. I'd and be interested. You, I came in on my phone for convenience purpose. So, ben, Vincent, before that, um, let's let's ping and just. I think I got one or two um, emails from people that didn't have your email address. So, just make sure I get those for, forwarded to you before that um, before that meeting. And then, so so Judy, just to kind of so to sum this up, basically, we're going in we're going in two directions. Um, one is Vincent's going to set up a working meeting to go through the needs and offers that weren't captured, anything that came in from email, um, and then figure out how to export and share that. And so that'll maybe bring some little nodes of connection from the experiment we did. And then Judy, um, we were also realizing the need to kind of contextualize the process and project plan a little bit better on how we roll out marketplaces and why and kind of reorient and develop that over time. So maybe in the 
So we'll go towards kind of a long, longer term strategic plan that leads to how we do this and get better at it over time. And then we'll make use of, of what we already captured with um, a working session and some communication from Vincent. Does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, beautiful. All right, well, thank you guys so much. This was, uh, this was insightful for me. Uh, it was really helpful to kind of differentiate out these levels and I hadn't thought through them like this and probably couldn't have without experience, experiencing it. So thanks Vincent for hosting and thank you everybody for working to sort this out. I think it's valuable. Awesome, well, thanks guys, appreciate it. We'll uh, see you guys soon. All right, great, thanks for